Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Albert from the Berg Seventh-day Adventist Church out in the West. We thank God for another interesting lesson for this quarter. Last quarter we've been studying the book of Hebrew. And this quarter we are studying the book of Genesis and I can't wait to go through all the lesson for this quarter. Our lesson today is lesson number three and the title of our lesson is Cain and his legacy. Our memory text from this lesson is in Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. It says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So this verse, God asked Cain, why you felt so much anger when God is rejecting, rejected his offering? God had shown favor on his brother Abel, not because his brother was handsome. And his offering, which seems to have enraged Adam, and Eve's firstborn son, right? God now speaks a wise warning to Cain, will, will not heed it, but it is a warning for us as well. God asked Cain to adjust his understanding of what is good to God's understanding of goodness. If Cain does well by God's standard, God will accept him. In other words, there is no reason for Cain to be angry about God's rejection. The cure for that rejection is obedience. If Cain does what is right, God will accept him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So why Cain murdered Abel? Dead John 3 verse 12, Do not be like Cain who belong to the evil one, and murder his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil, and his brothers were righteous. So families, we see that obedience to God is righteous living. An obedient life is a life of righteousness. Obedience and righteousness are the same. Revelation 22 verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that keep his commandment, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, God says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live. Families, God is not interested in self-righteousness. Jesus said in John 8, 44, Jesus says, You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. So families, when we are doing the opposite of what God instructs us to do, we actually belong to the fa our father, the devil, because we choose to do the devil's will rather than following God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, God says, If you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. And here comes the devil, says to Eve, you will surely live. This is the deception walk of the devil church. Eve or Cain will have to choose to follow the devil. And that is very sad. God says because you choose to follow the devil, what is contrary to mine, Gus is the crown for you. Gus on the earth is the result of one particular choice contrary to God's commandment. Families, we need to be very cautious and be very careful. Be very spiritually discerned in every choices that we are making today. We all know that one day soon, we will all face God's judgment. We don't, we don't need to be scared of judgment day. We must only be scared of our own choices we are making today. Either we are following God, or we are following our own desires or evil desires. Families, there will only be two classes of people in the judgment day. Those who choose to follow God, and those who choose to follow the devil, and that goes back to Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. It is sad, but many Christians today are following their own way. They are following their own tradition. I was once in that same experience. I grew up in a Presbyterian background, very strong religious background. But then I come to realize that we are just following our own tradition instead of following God's way. And that is when I chose to be converted. And I'm glad that God has led me this pathway in the way of truth. I want to share the experience of the wedding at Cana in John 12 verse 1, John 2 verse 1 to 12. The experience of the wine at the wedding, when they ran out of wine, 
Jesus' mother, Mary, was telling Jesus, expecting Jesus to perform a miracle. But Jesus said, no, my time has not yet come. But then in verse 5, Jesus' mom knew all about Jesus. He knew his son very well. He knew that his son is full of truth. Then Jesus' mother, in verse 5, in John 2, instructed the servant, this is what he says, do whatever he tells you to do, do it. Wow, what a command. Jesus' mother Mary said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do, do it. Families, Mary's advice is for all of us to follow, to do whatever Jesus tells us to do, do it. My challenge to you is, are you willing to do what Jesus said? Are you willing to follow what Jesus said to do? Or you want to be like Cain, to reject what Jesus says, but you want to follow your own way. The Bible says that there's, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end thereof leads to death. That's Proverbs 14 verse 12. Do not be deceived, families. Do not be blindfolded by the devil. Satan can camouflage himself, making himself look beautiful, look as it is the truth. But families, I encourage you to look again, to think again. Check your Bible. If it's the truth, believe it. If it's not from the Bible, don't waste your time to believe it. I encourage, I encourage you today to do whatever the Bible says. This is exactly to live a righteous life is to do whatever God says. As thus said the Lord, ask God to give you a mind to do what he says. May God's spirit lead us an obedient mind. Obedience is a lifestyle of love. Let me say that one more time. Obedience is a lifestyle of love. We love God, therefore we obey him. We show him. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said in Luke 6, verse 43 to 45, A good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. So we are the reflection, we are the product of an obedient heart to God that reflects on how we reflect God like Abel. The Bible says that by faith, Abel honored God by doing what he says, even though he died, he still speaks. My last first Bible verse to us, before we finish, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 17, verse 13, King Solomon says, everything is vanity. He comes to the conclusion and he says this, fear God and keep his commandment, for this, this is the duty of all mankind. Here is the conclusion of the mother, fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the duty of all mankind. It is my prayer, families, that we neglect self and focus in what God says, that we must be doers of the word, but not hearers only, deceiving our own self. Let's pray. Awesome God, thank you for this lesson. Help us, give us an obedient heart that we can live a lifestyle of obedience. Lord, I pray that you will give us an obedient mind, that we can obey God, that we will forsake our traditions and, and will follow Jesus, follow the Lamb wherever he leads. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.